This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Alright, which camera am I going to shoot today? Maybe hmm, the Leica M6? Nah, too boring. I shoot this one all the time. So what about the hmm, Bronica ETRSI? Nah, too heavy. What about the Yashica T4 though? Hmm, too automated. <sighs> huh. The Pentax MX, my very first film camera. Feels pretty nostalgic, so alright, I'll shoot this one today for the sake of good old times when camera manufacturers still made film cameras. Wait, wait, what what happened? Did did I just did I just hallucinate? No, it's it's just my old and rusty Pentax. I don't know, I, I thought for a second I saw a new Pentax camera somewhere, but wait, it was there again? No no no, that that can't be. Is it true, a, a new film camera in 2024? That can only mean one thing. It's time. It's time for film. I feel like this is one of the oldest rumors when it comes to film photography that Pentax will bring out a new film camera at some point. And I feel like some people were already tired of waiting. Some people thought it would never come. But guess what? Surprise, surprise, it's here. This is the Pentax 17, the new film camera that Pentax brought out in 2024. And some of the rumors were actually true because this is in fact a half frame camera. But just as a little disclaimer, Pentax sent me this camera before the official release. So I'm one of the happy people who can play around with it before the rest of the world can. However, I just want to say that I have no agreement with Pentax whatsoever. There's nothing that I'm obliged to say in this video. In fact, Pentax encouraged me to state my honest opinion, to share my thoughts online, which I really value because not a lot of camera manufacturers or, you know, brands in general, truly trust to give the whole creative responsibility to the artist. So I'm very, very excited to try this out. I'm not sure if this will be a review because I just got the camera basically now and I will try it out for the first time. So it will rather be a first hands-on with this camera. And right off the bat, after unboxing it, I can already say that there's plenty of things I like about it, but also a couple of things that I wish were a little bit differently. So you know that you can definitely trust that I will state my honest opinion here. It's a rather small, rather handy camera made out of plastic, I think, for the most part. Uh, and we have this silver, almost titanium looking uh, silver uh, here and black at the rest of the camera. And as you can see, because of the viewfinder, it is a half frame camera. So it has a portrait orientation instead of a landscape orientation viewfinder. And as you can see here, it has a fixed lens, which is a 25 millimeter lens. But since it's half frame, it's probably a little bit narrower than a proper 25. And it has the brightest aperture of f3.5. And um, yeah, if we take a look at the button layout, it looks a little bit complicated at first, but I actually think the layout is pretty smart and you have all of the necessary uh, functions that you need. So first off, there is actually a button to turn it on. So you can turn it off, but also turn it on so that you won't drain the battery if you don't need the battery. And um, on the on button, there's also the shutter. So you click this to actually fire the camera and then you wind it. And this tactile feeling of winding, I think is pretty, pretty cool. And I'm happy that they actually went for a proper lever instead of just like a rotating wheel, because this feels truly, truly nostalgic in my opinion. But when we take a look at the button layout, first what we can see is that we have a, a manual uh, dial for the ISO. I think it cannot read the DX code, but you have to set your ISO manually. But for me, this is definitely a bonus because you have more creative freedom if you can set it yourself. Also, what I find very useful is that we have a exposure compensation dial. So in case you, for example, have a situation where you have a lot of backlight or something like that, you can actually adjust this one and make sure that uh, the light meter will read the scene according to your exposure settings. And on this side here, we have all the different shooting modes. And I have to admit that I had to look into the manual because I'm usually a person who shoots fully manual cameras. So I just know shutter speed, aperture and ISO, and that's pretty much it. And I am a noob when it comes to all the shortcuts for the auto modes. But basically, this I think is also pretty smart 
because you have a full auto mode, which is the blue one, which also states auto, of course, but then you have a yellow and a white kind of menu. So once you're in the yellow menu, it means that it will use the flash. So there's like a program automatic and also the night automatic. But if you don't want to use the flash, you can simply go into the white menu and there you also have a program um, auto mode. So, you know, the camera will basically do everything for you. But in case you're, for example, doing longer exposures, you can use the night mode or the bokeh mode if you want to make sure that the camera will use the brightest aperture. And you can also do bulb, which means that the shutter will stay open for as long as you press the trigger. So for example, with the bulb mode, for as long as I press the trigger, the shutter stays open. And usually with most cameras, you have like a port in the shutter so that you can use a uh, you know, shutter release cable, which is not the case here. So I assume that this here might actually be for a cable release. Also, when it comes to the focusing, it's a very, let's say, reduced type of focusing because you have these symbols like on old point and shoot cameras that stand for the distances. So for example, you have a mountain, which means that it's the furthest away distance. Then you have a larger group of people, a smaller group of people, one individual person, food, which means that it's a bit closer to you, as well as a macro mode. So basically, if you don't know anything about focusing, if you don't know anything about distances, you just have to get familiar with the symbols and you're good to go. For example, I'm a person who shoots manual cameras, so I usually also meter my distances by actual meters and not by symbols. But that's also uh, possible because right here we see the um, meter or feet distances uh, that pair up with the symbols. So if you are more accompanied with the meter or feet distances, you can also um, yeah, just do it like that and double check if the distances are correct that you have in mind. But um, just sitting here talking about the camera will not bring us anywhere. You want to see some results, I want to see some results. So I guess we load up the camera and actually go outside to take some photos. New film camera in 2024. Pentax, man, it's crazy. And to be honest, this fact alone makes me almost not care about the camera and specs in detail because the sheer fact that Pentax is really doing this is huge to me. But of course, you are here to learn more about the camera itself, so let's talk about it. In this video I will share my opinion about the design, the features, the shooting experience, the build quality and last but not least the image quality. If we start with the design question, I personally think it's a very stylish camera. I like the color, I like the button layout, I like the grip and the overall size. I have to say though that right off the bat I was surprised how big the camera is for the fact of it being a half frame camera. Many of my full-frame analog cameras like the Yashica T4 or Olympus Mu are smaller than this camera, which led me to believe it's more of an ergonomic reason to not make it any smaller. You might have noticed that the Pentax 17 does not have a fancy lens retracting mechanism as some of the aforementioned vintage point and shoots do. You can turn the camera on and off, but the lens is not moving or ejecting or whatever and in my opinion that is a very very good thing because it means that there are less parts that will break over time. Also I have to say right off the bat that the camera feels a bit plasticky in the hand. It doesn't feel as premium, but almost a bit cheap, which is actually my biggest complaint, while most of the other things are personal preference. I am, by the way, shooting in my hometown today, Münster, which you probably haven't seen so much on the channel because I don't really like shooting here. Um, yeah, but I kind of wanted to make this challenge to shoot this camera in a familiar place that I don't really feel inspired by because I thought that the change of orientation to actually shoot more in um, portrait orientation instead of landscape orientation like I usually do 
might be a good way to see my city with different eyes. So I'm here, but don't expect any masterpieces, please. The name Pentax 17 gives homage to the half-frame film format, referring to the 17 to 24mm frame measurements. I am well aware that the half-frame choice might lead to very mixed opinions from the film community, some loving and some hating this choice Pentax went for. But I assume the film format was chosen deliberately for mostly two reasons. This camera is more targeted towards younger photographers who uh, want to get into film, who are used to shooting with a smartphone and used to shoot in portrait orientation. So for one, it's a format that might be familiar for younger folks who might seek out for a more analog experience and consider to get a film camera. And for the other, half frame means having double the amounts of shots. A regular roll of 36 exposures will result in 72 frames with this camera, which is not too bad if we take a look at the current film prices. Even with a 24 exposure roll, you get 48 images. That's quite hard to finish, but a full roll, impossible. <laughs> One observation I made while doing street photography though, the shutter is incredibly silent. And since you have to wind the film manually, you don't have the ultra loud winding sound we all know from most analog point and shoot cameras. And that certainly makes the whole shooting experience way more discreet. When I have troubles feeling inspired by my hometown, sometimes it's good to seek for a little spark of inspiration from outside. Well, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of creative classes in countless categories, such as graphic design, illustration, animation, writing, music production, marketing, but of course also photography and videography, along many more. I was surprised to find many classes on street photography on Skillshare and one class that particularly stuck with me is Andre D. Wagner's class The Ongoing Moment. I've been a huge fan of Wagner's work and being able to dive so deep into his process, understanding his way of seeing is something I feel super inspired by. Another class I devoured is the class Document Your Life by Nathaniel Drew in which he talks about four methods to document your life more intentionally. This class made me even more excited about shooting a camera like the Pentax 17 since it's an unobtrusive, yet compared to a phone, more intentional tool that offers a lot of frames to capture everyday moments in your life. Especially now in summer, as it gets warmer, the streets become more alive and more crowded again, I can feel the extra boost of excitement in me to go out and shoot and document what I see around me. In case you want to get inspired by countless creative classes yourself, you can join Skillshare by using the link in the description box down below. And the first 500 people who will join through my link will also get a one month free trial. Fast. But even for more experienced photographers, I think a half frame camera is something worth of a second look. It's a format that requires a bit of a cognitive rewiring to think in a different orientation than we are mostly used to with most analog but also digital cameras. For me, it certainly led me to paying attention to different motifs and compositions. And also I feel like there's a couple of really nice things about half frame because for me it kind of um, encouraged me to shoot in diptychs because with half frame you have two frames in the regular size of a 35 millimeter negative to see them as like a, a double pair and that is kind of fun and I feel like this format definitely encourages creativity. Ui, that's fucking up. This idea of thinking in pairs is probably my favorite aspect about the camera or half frame in general. I started thinking more in sequences and juxtapositions and tried linking the neighboring frames in some way which felt more intentional than just snapping away. Just in the sense of intentional documentation, this camera almost feels like a notepad to me. Since I have so many frames, I don't feel like restraining myself too much, thus shoot a bit more loosely, while still having this more conscious approach with a novel, at least to me, frame orientation and the idea to think in diptychs. But besides being half frame, I have to say that I was really astounded by the image quality. When I looked at my scans for the first time, I honestly thought it's just a regular 35mm frame. I shot Kodak Ultramax, Ilford HP5 and Ilford XP2, which are all not super super fine grain films. 
Of course, the grain is slightly more noticeable, but overall the level of detail and sharpness really surprised me. But if we take a closer look at the lens, it's actually no wonder, because we have some high quality glass in here. While the focal length is based on the Ricoh Auto Half, the optical design of the lens is based on the SBO Mini, offering a glass lens with HD coating and an additional SP coating to repel dust and oil. For me, the whole focusing solution of this camera is a bit of a downer though. I understand why Pentax went for zone focusing by symbols, since it's a nice mixture between having manual control but still making it simple for beginners. I personally would have wished to have a rangefinder or even autofocus. So overall the viewfinder is really nice, it's really really bright and you can also see the focusing symbol you are on in the viewfinder. Um, and the frame lines are also very bright. However, one thing that's a little bit confusing to me is that you have two pairs of frame lines, the regular one and also the correction for the close-up frame lines. However, I'm not sure when to use it. Is it only for the closest one? Is it for the other ones as well? And that's a little bit puzzling for me, so I just hope that I frame correctly. Um, but other than that, I feel like the viewfinder is really, really nicely done. Same goes for the shooting modes. The modes are very intuitive and the fact that you can choose if you want to shoot with or without a flash is very valuable. Also it's very understandable why Pentax decided to go for all auto modes to make beginners focus on shooting itself and not so much on the settings. However, for experienced photographers or control freaks like me, it's almost a little bit too simple and too automatic. I sometimes just didn't trust the camera to do the right thing and I prefer setting everything manually or at least see in the viewfinder what aperture and shutter speed the camera chose for me. So there's actually one more thing I think we should talk about and that is the price. But let me quickly sit uh, down for that because I can already see the comment section exploding. Um, yeah, because this little camera will be retailed at 549 euros 99. And that is quite a number to let sink in, not gonna lie. In me, there's like two sides when it comes to the price, because there's one side that kind of understands the price tag, because, um, yeah, that's a camera that probably required quite a lot of development and research, so I understand why Pentax had to go for this price tag. However, on the other hand, I'm kind of not sure if the target group and the price might be a bit of a mismatch, because this camera with the features and the build quality and the design and everything is more targeted towards younger photographers, maybe even beginner photographers, like Gen Z people who uh, have you know, quite, quite some experience with taking photos on their phone and want to get into film photography. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a beginner type camera, which doesn't have a beginner type price tag. I'm not sure if somebody who's just starting out with film and who tries to buy the first camera will drop over 500 euros for their first camera. So I'm not really sure if they will actually um, yeah, get enough people from the actual target group to buy this camera. What I think could happen is that there's maybe a percentage of people who are analog nerds who already have like a camera collection who were thinking about a half frame camera just like me and we're thinking to maybe buy a second-hand half-frame camera like a Pen F or something like that. And now this option, having a new camera with new parts, becomes pretty, pretty attractive if you ask me. But I think it's either of these features, higher build quality or autofocus, that would uh, make me go 100% and get this camera. But because of the current state, I think it's a, a rather niche group that might be interested in this camera but prove me wrong. So I feel like it's a pretty hot topic. So let me know your thoughts about the price and the camera in general in the comments down below. I have to admit that in the beginning I was maybe a bit skeptical or maybe even disappointed that it's an automated half frame camera and not a new analog Ricoh GR that secretly many people wished for. But the more I used the Pentax 17, the more I actually enjoyed it. It's something different than my usual vintage point and shoots and offers a bit more of a distinction between full frame film and digital images, so I can actually see myself taking this camera on trips as a backup camera for casual documentation to not use up too much film, but still have some tangible memories. So it's time for a little 
verdict about this camera because there are some things I like and some things I dislike. The things I like are certainly the design. I think the camera is really pretty and the button layout, I think it's very intuitive. I love that they went for an on and off switch and also that you don't have a retracting lens. I love that they went for this uh, vintage type winder. I love that you have a couple of manual options to set your camera that many point and shoot cameras don't uh, offer to, to adjust as for example the ISO to have the flash on or off. So I feel like the overall concept is uh, very well thought through and I also love that they went for half frame. Not gonna lie, in the beginning I was a little bit surprised, but I see why they, did, why they did that. And I feel like it's kind of the best of both worlds for new photographers who are used to the portrait orientation format through their phones, but also to more established or you know experienced photographers to kind of have a challenge to try something new. The things I don't like are the build quality. As I said before, it feels a little bit cheap and I just wish it would be a little bit more premium. And for me personally, that might not be the case for everybody, but at least for me, I wish to have a little bit more manual options. And last but not least, of course, the price tag is something that is very debatable. However, I think it's important to not judge the camera just by the camera, but actually judge the, the camera by its meaning, if you understand what I mean. Because, um, you know, it's not about this camera in particular, but I think it's about the bold move of Pentax to put out a film camera in this day and age. Um, you know, I feel like it's just a sign and uh, a, a bold statement of, of the company to say that film is alive and we still support film and there's a need for new film cameras even today, which I think just makes the whole beauty of this camera, even though it might not cater to everybody's needs. Um, yeah, I just think that having accessible working new cameras today um, yeah, speaks for itself because this is so, so, so important because this is what we need to keep film alive. So yeah, I guess my verdict is just, I hope this is not the end, but I hope that this is just the beginning. <laughs>